Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the 100th episode of the 10 Golden Rules of Internet Marketing for Law Firms podcast. My name is Jay Berkowitz, and it's been my pleasure to be your host, your guide through the first 99 episodes and here today on 100. Couple quick things before we get into this week's show. Big thank you to all the guests from the first 99 episodes. We've had some unbelievable guests. Craig Newmark, the founder of Craigslist. Gary Vaynerchuk, the famous social media icon. Gary V was on our show when he worked in his dad's wine store. Jason Calacanis is the host of the All In podcast. The number one podcast in the world today was on our show before he even had a podcast. He was doing a startup to compete with Google called Mahalo. We had Google's Matt Cutts teaching us how they do search engine spotting. We had Joe Rotolo uh, breaking news about a new AI chat product for Intaker. And uh, you know, the last 50 episodes have been all about internet marketing for law firms. The first 50 were all about internet marketing before we were a specialist uh, in just law firms. Justin Lovely recently taught us how to use artificial intelligence in a law firm. And Justin has his own uh, personal injury firm in South Carolina, and he has some amazing trip tips and tricks and tools. So go back and listen to some of these great episodes. There's so much great content. Today, we've got another special episode. We're going to be talking about how to get ranked in all six parts of Google for your law firm. Now, you're probably thinking, what are the six parts of Google? Well, of course, there's Google. SEO, search engine optimization, pay-per-click, Google Maps. We teach you the strategies for each of these areas. And then there's two really important areas that are, are relatively new. The local service ads, Google Screen. We show you how to get right to the top of the LSAs of the Google Screen. Get to the very top of Google. And Google has a brand new search result. And it's the artificial intelligence search result. So we cover that and the new uh, strategies for getting right to the top of the AI search results. They look like chat GPT results, but they're served right there on Google. And you're gonna have to listen to the podcast to find out the sixth area, mystery number six, super important, super valuable area of Google. So with that, let's get into the six parts of Google. My name is Jay Berkowitz. Thank you for being with us for the first 100 episodes and please enjoy the next 100. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. We've got an interesting webinar today. I hope interesting. My name is Jay Berkowitz, and today we're going to show you how to rank on all six parts of Google. And um, if you can, do me a favor, just type in the chat. Let me open the chat here, see what's going on. Um, the, the first part of Google is local service ads. Number two is search, pay per click search. Number three, the brand new Google AI search. And we're going to talk a lot about that. Uh, number four, Google Maps, how to get ranked in the three pack. Super important for an attorney or a personal injury attorney. We're going to, most of my examples today are going to be for personal injury attorneys. Number five, SEO. And number six, the mystery number six. Here's where the chat comes in. Hey, Mark Lopez from Indianapolis. D does anyone have a guess? What is that mysterious sixth part of Google that's super important to search rank for? So uh, let's get into it. We're going to look at Google Maps. We're going to look at the incredible uh, results that we can uh, track for the three pap for Google Maps. We're going to track keywords. These guys got 13,000 keywords on, on uh, Google, meaning you search for something, your website comes up. We're going to show you what to do if you've fallen off the Google cliff. Is your SEO um, going in the wrong direction? And a couple examples of that. We're going to spend a lot of time on the Google local service ads. These are the ads that come right at the very top of Google. Um, and I have a download for that with our secret algorithm. I'll throw that up on the screen a little longer later on. But if you want to pause and grab it, if you're watching this sometime in the future on YouTube, go ahead. Um, and this is the new AI, the generative artificial intelligence search results. And these are starting to pop up. Google had a little... A little mistakes, you know, a few mistakes when they first launched the AI. Most of these AI products do a little what's called hallucinating. They make up answers. But, um, you know, this is Google's going to have to get this right, because obviously a lot of people are using chat GPT and the other um, AI 
search services. So Google's going to incorporate this. We're going to show you the history of that and how to get ranked in these. These are clickable spots. So super uh, great opportunity. So do me a favor, again, in the chat, just uh, give us a quick one. If you're super confident, if you figure you've got all six parts of Google nailed and you're crushing it, and your SEO is great, and you're just here for some of those super advanced tips. And give me a two in the chat if you're a little bit more confused, if you're not like, if you're like, hey, you know, we we really need some help. I don't know the difference between local service ads and pay-per-click. I never even heard of the local service ads. Put a two in the chat. And if you're somewhere in the middle, put a three in the chat. You know, put, give, give me a hands up. All right, we got some confident folks. But, you know, first of all, we've got ones and threes and twos. Thanks for playing along. First of all, congratulations. And, and big shout out to y'all for being here today or for watching this on YouTube because we're all super busy. If you're an attorney, if you're a personal injury attorney, if you're in the marketing department at a law firm, we've all got a lot to do. So thanks for your time today. And the reason why I'm congratulating you is because the people who take the time to, to study their craft, to put the time in to do things right, to learn the best practices are generally gonna be in the top 5% of their field. And I put a lot of time in, you know, hopefully you guys will appreciate that today. I, I watch webinars, I listen to podcasts, I listen to stuff on search, I listen to stuff on marketing, I listen to stuff on tennis to improve my tennis game. So you all are putting the time in today. Um, we're, my goal today, my, 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 my mission, my space mission, uh, Elon's crushing it and getting us to space. My mission today is to give you all the tools you need to succeed in all six parts of search. Um, we're going to talk about some basics in each section, some, some intermediate stuff and some advanced stuff. And then we're going to um, move into um, uh, a little bit about me. So I'm going to start with just a little bit about me. Um, and uh, as I said, the, the advanced strategy. So I come from Winnipeg, Canada. Most of the year, it looks like this, one of the coldest places on earth. And we got really super lucky and moved to beautiful Boca Raton, Florida. There's my beautiful wife, Bonnie, and my beautiful pup, Parker. Uh, hanging out in Boca. My company is called 10 Golden Rules, and we do internet marketing for law firms. So uh, if at the end of all this, you figure, you figure, hey, you know, this stuff's all great, Jay, but I don't have time to do all this stuff. You know, please get in touch with us through 10 Golden Rules. Or you can find me anywhere, Jay Berkowitz. Um, and one other thing, if you are watching this on YouTube, click the subscribe and like buttons. That helps us a lot. Uh, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, we're getting close. So I uh, love you for that. Here's some of our amazing clients all across the country. We do um, websites, SEO, all the stuff we're going to talk about today, pay-per-click, local service ads, Google Maps, content, video. Here's a beautiful new site we did for Keith and Arneith Foster in uh, Atlanta. Another uh, really great site for Fadul in uh, uh, the West. Uh, they're in um, Texas and New Mexico. Um, my personally wrote uh, this first book called The Ten Golden Rules of Online Marketing over 20 years ago now. So I've been talking about this stuff and speaking on all the big stages, talking about internet marketing. Uh, my fifth book is coming out called Advanced Internet Marketing for Law Firms. Um, we're also pretty popular on YouTube. We have over 300,000 views. Our top most popular video has been viewed 85,000 times. So as I said, if you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, really appreciate that. That really helps us out. Mini, one, one last thing before we get into the content today, mini case study. I got a call from a really nice guy, Brian Garrett from Oklahoma City. He's a solo personal injury attorney. And he said he found us on the internet. And this is actually a case study we did with Brian on, on one of our videos. You can watch this on the YouTube channel. And he said he wasn't ranking for hardly anything. And now he ranks for almost everything he searches. Here's a search for Oklahoma City car accident attorneys. He's coming up in the Google screen, local service ads in the Google Maps, and he's doing great. He's up over a thousand keywords um, in terms of his SEO uh, keywords, and he's signing cases. Um, he's up to 30, 40 cases every single month, and that's really changed the trajectory of his business. So if you follow all these uh, tools, if you follow all these golden rules, if you will, um, this is how you can succeed like Brian did. So without further ado, let's get into the six parts of Google. I still don't, I still don't see a correct guess in the chat for uh, what that sixth part is, but we'll get there. So for the last uh, couple of years, actually for four or five years, I've been talking about artificial intelligence and I've been telling the future. Um, so this is my fortune teller section. 
And I I've been showing uh, what Google calls Google Labs. So this is a straight up Google search for Tom Brady, of course, the uh, famous now retired quarterback. And Google has a section called Google Apps. So if you ever want to check out what's happening in the future, you know, you can go to the Google Apps and they show you what they're working on in their development section. And so in that section, uh, Google is demoing artificial intelligence. So here is like the regular search for Tom Brady. And here's the AI, the artificial intelligence result for, for Tom Brady. And guess what? It's here. It's real. It's live now. And we're seeing this across multiple categories. It's only coming up maybe one, two, three percent of searches, but we're starting to see it. And as I mentioned, Google fumbled a little bit out of the gate. They had some mistakes, but here's an example. How do I choose a car accident attorney? And we're seeing AI results for how to choose a car accident attorney. Now, what are some of the opportunities for this? Well, first of all, these are clickable links and Google's showing their homework. So these are called citations um, or, you know, I don't, I don't know what Google formally calls it, in-house. But essentially, these are, or it's actually called a carousel, I think. But here, Google's showing the sites they use to compile these results. So there's a search opportunity that you can actually get listed. Here's another example how to unplug a sink. Um, and it's interesting, like, how, how Google's representing these different results. So they're still showing uh, Google Guaranteed, which in legal is, is called Google Screen. Um, and they're showing, you know, a result that's compiled from different websites. And then here are the websites that they're referring to, Liquid, Plumber, Home Depot. Um, here's a search, search for how to get stereo from your Bluetooth speakers. I don't know about you guys, but I, I've, I got two of these, but it's really hard to, to get stereo from your, from your Bluetooth speakers. Um, and so, you know, one of the things we're gonna do is update content regularly to keep it current. You want the latest information and trends. So a few, a few other things we notice here, right? Like the ads are not going away. In all these different examples, we saw the ads and some people are saying, oh, AI is gonna be the death of Google ads. No, no, no. It's a billion dollar industry, $250 billion a year in, in revenue. It's not going away. And there's an opportunity to rank in these carousel listings. So we'll talk about how to do that. And one of the other clues is that the people also ask section that we've been talking about for a couple of years. You've probably been seeing this in Google where Google shows the best result to a question and then they show the other similar questions that people ask. So essentially this answering of questions, helping people is kind of the, the magic to all of this because for four or five years in all their patents and trademark filings and whatnot, Google's been saying that their algorithm's based on helping people. Helpful websites, answering questions. How do I choose a car accident attorney? If you're the most helpful, you've got a chance to rank for this stuff. We see Ben Crank's, uh, Ben Crump is ranking for this. BB Law Group has is in these carousel answers, right? So one of the strategies we've been using and we, we highly recommend is to answer questions for people and use a blended strategy. So we shoot videos. We give our clients a dozen simple questions and answers. What happens if I get hit by an Uber or Lyft? This is my friend and client, Jeff McDonald, based out of Richmond, Virginia. And we search engine optimize this video on YouTube. And then we use the video as a blog on the website. So now the website has a super effective web page. It's a blog page with a video combined. So we put that video on the website and it's a blog, you know, it's a blog video, so it's even a better video. Um, and then we also use those videos on all the socials, in the newsletter, and on the Google Maps. And we're getting some great results. Uh, Stuart and Stuart has over 6,800 views on this one. Lions and Cider's got 3,000 video views, 25,000 video views on these search optimized uh, videos. So how do you, uh, some other clues. As a matter of fact, if you search how to rank in Google AI overviews, Actually, you're starting to call this section AI overview. Uh, their Google, their product is called Google Gemini. Uh, their, their AI product, their, their comparable product to chat GPT. So some of the things they, they're telling us, how do you rank for these strategies, right? Like we get an AI answer for how to rank in Google AI. Um, your content should be well-researched. Use a conversational tone. So that's something we've been seeing in a lot of the Google algorithms. You know, answer, speak, speak like a human. Don't speak like a search engine optimization person, right? Like we used to write copy that said, uh, you know, I'm a personal injury attorney based in, um, you know, Dallas, Texas. We're Dallas um, car accident and motorcycle lawyers. So if you need a Dallas 
personal injury, car accident lawyer. Like you don't write that way anymore. You don't have to write for the search engines. Be authentic and make sure your content resonates. Um, because a, a lot of it is Google is evaluating your website based on how many people go to your website and then spend time there. How much content do they consume? Do they read your article? Do they watch your video? Do they sign up for your, your white paper or your, your newsletter, or your webinar, right? Um, keep the content fresh. So part of that video strategy, when I said we shoot 12 videos, we post one per week, every week for a quarter. So if you sign up with 10 Golden Rules, every, we only need you for an hour and a half once a quarter. You can answer 12 questions on video, and we're going to use that for this new AI uh, answering questions, helping people uh, type of search engine optimization. So we keep it fresh. We make it engaging. Some other strategies, think about topics, not keywords. Right. So we're not we're not targeting like personal injury lawyer. We're typing what to do if I get hit by an Uber. Right. We're, we're targeting topics, not keywords. OK, so that's a little bit about the new AI. Obviously, more to come. The product just came out in May. We're recording this in June 2024. If you're watching this sometime in the future um, and the next up, I'm going to change the order up here a little bit instead of going like one, two, three, four, five. We, we covered the AI search. Now we're going to talk about the very top of Google, the Google screened or the local service ads. Some people call them LSAs. The consumer is probably going to think of it as Google screen because it's got the check mark. But this program has been around for about five or six years. Now, it's newer to the legal category. But for the consumer, plumbers, air conditioning, locksmiths, garage door repair, this program has called, been called Google Verified. And it's been around for five or six years. So the consumer might not know what this check mark means or how how a lawyer gets a check mark, but they do know that Google's verified you in some way, shape, or form. So number one, this is a great place to be because you got the check mark. Number two, it's at the very top of Google. Number three, we want these opportunities. We want these phone calls because typically, and I'm sure this is the same for your firm as it is for you know every other firm, when you get a phone call, you convert those into customers like one in four, one in five, 20%, 25%, right? So a phone call is much better than a click, like a pay-per-click where if, if in this instance, they're gonna click over to the, the um, client's website. And if you're a good website, it's gonna convert at five or 10%. But if, if you're any, you know, even if you're not that good, you're gonna convert like 20% of people who call you. So this, this gives you a hundred percent opportunity. This only gives you like a five or 10% opportunity, right? So we're gonna we're gonna focus next on these local services. Now, one thing that's changed, just you know, new tweak on Google, and Google's always tweaking things, right? So there's two uh, results on a desktop search, and three on the all important mobile search. Now, pay a lot of attention to mobile. We a lot of my examples here today are desktop, but over sixty or seventy percent of searches for personal injury law and for most categories of law, family attorneys. Uh, we work, we do some work with sex abuse attorneys, some securities uh, litigators. Most of the searches being done these days are being done on mobile. So a lot of our thinking is always like when we look at our computer in our office, but you always got to search, you know, these keywords on mobile and see what's going on in your, uh, in the mobile environment. So, so much more important. So th this, the other reason why this pro program is so important like this is one of our clients and you see they got about 200, over 200 leads in their Google dashboard. Now, when you log into the back end of the local service ads, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see all your leads listed out like this. And you see these two are new, so they haven't been opened yet. So they're still, still dark. But if I cl click on this, I get lots of details about the caller. I get, uh, I can actually click and watch, listen to the call. So you click a little you know play button and you listen to the calls. So that's how you disposition these calls and you move them into either completed, this is a good lead, thank you very much, Google, or archived, hey, this was a, someone looking for a lawyer, but they're looking for you know, a real estate lawyer. Um, I'm, I'm a, a family attorney, I don't, I don't take uh, real estate calls. And it, here's some of our clients doing great right at the very top of the local service ads, um, in either in the top one or two positions. Um, and the other question I get all the time, like, does this really work? Like, we used to come up in the local service ads in, in the Google screen, but we, we don't come up anymore. But here's one of our clients, very consistent, steady activity. Um, we're able to get, you know, somewhere between 50 and 185 leads um, every month. And these are these are total leads charged. 
So what we do is we track the ones that uh, were disputed. Um, so the total before disputes, the total after disputes, the cost per lead and the cost per signed cases. And here's the number we all really care about, right? How many new clients signed up in a month and what was the cost per client? So we're signing clients around, you know, thousand bucks, average $1,300. Uh, these guys signed 275 clients in a year. So here's some more examples of these results. If you click on more personal injury lawyers, Google's now showing 20 results. Um, this would be a second page, right? I click here, I go here. This is just an example of a screenshot. And I'll leave this up for a couple of minutes this time. Um, now we're going to get into what we call our secret algorithm. These are the top five or six things you need to know to get yourself in that top two and consistently get a big piece of the pie. It's a very important pie, right? The very top of Google, these phone calls. So if you screen that, you'll get our secret algorithm. Now, here's the first thing I always talk about is the red phone secret. And I always like to tell a story about the Ronald Reagan White House supposedly they had a red phone right there in the White House and it was directly tied to another red phone in the Kremlin in Russia. And if that phone rang, you picked it up right away because they, we were in the middle of the Cold War. And if Russia was calling and wanted to negotiate about something, you know, you immediately picked up that phone. Well, that's how I want you to think about your local service ads. When you get a call from this local service ads program, you've got to answer all calls within 15 seconds and you can't have any missed calls. Because God forbid you miss a call from the Kremlin, you know, there could be nuclear bombs like going off in Cuba or something, right? So we got to make certain we're answering these calls. It's mission critical because when you miss the calls or if you answer like we and we listen to these recordings, we hear it all the time. You know, maybe the receptionist is on a break or something or she's on another call and, and these calls don't get answered for like 45 seconds. Uh, and they Then they put them on hold for another 45 seconds. Then the person hangs up, right? You got to be super quick to pick up these calls. Now, we 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 what, one of the things we started doing is doing test calls. So here's some attorneys who did great. Stern and Cohen picked up on the first ring. Cicerelli on the second ring. The Rothberg firm on the second ring. Philadelphia Injury Lawyers on the second ring. You can't let those go to the dreaded answering machine, or even the phone trees. What you know, if you have one of those phone trees, you know the automated. Um, hey, if you're a new, new client, press one. If you're an existing client, press two. If you're a doctor's office, press three. That is a no-no for the local service ad. So what you want to do is put a special number on your local service ads so it goes right to the number one um, for new clients and just gets, you know, immediately gets that phone picked up. So no answering machines, please, on the local service ads program. Now, none of these things are really negotiable anymore because we're talking about two spots at the top of the, the desktop and three spots at the top of the, the cell phone and, and direct phone calls, direct leads, right? Uh, the very top of Google, you know, that's where we want to be. So that's why I talk so much about this program. Second thing in our secret algorithm, we're going to put the bidding mode to maximize leads. Uh, that seems to be working the best right now. Number three, you've got to get in the back end of the program. I talked about that a minute ago and immediately designate your leads. Uh, is this a good lead, Mr. Google? Thank you very much. It's booked. Is this a robocall? Someone trying to sell me something? I want to I want to archive that or even dispute it and not pay for that call. Then the next part of the algorithm, you need one to two new Google reviews, you know, the four and five star Google reviews every week. So the old thinking was, you know, you do a program and you try and get like 30 reviews all at once. And that's no longer the case. You want to start and spread these out and get one to two new Google reviews every week. And we developed a program called our VIP Referral and Review Program, where we send out gift boxes to your clients, to your past, you know, when you when you solve a case, when you get a, a, a resolution, and we call them on your behalf. We say, hey, we just sent you this great box. Make sure you open it. There's all kinds of branded merchandise in there. There's a, a gift card in there for a Starbucks um, or, a, or a Dunkin' Donuts. And we've got some VIP cards in there. You can give these to your friends and family if, if they ever need a lawyer. And, and then finally, um, we ask them to make that five-star Google review on your behalf. The next strategy is called the multi-location strategy. And you see we've got uh, Morgan Morgan actually has six locations in Orlando. Now, their head office is there. I'm sure they got a big, beautiful um, skyscraper with all their, all their attorneys. Why do they have six locations? Well, it's called the multi-location strategy. Each one of these locations has a chance to have its own Google Maps listing, 
and its own local service ads calls. And Google base, bases the algorithm on proximity. So you want to be as close to as many potential customers as possible. So again, you can download the secret algorithm, um, but you know the quick summary, answer your calls within 15 seconds, no missed calls, set bidding to maximize leads, get in there and, and, and you know pick those uh, good, goods and bads uh, one to two times per week, designate all leads immediately, and select the high proximity locations. And the final thing, you know, we, we did a whole separate webinar. So if you're one of these people and, and you say, oh, I've fallen, I can't get back up in the top two. If you're one of those people, we did a whole separate webinar on this, but here's the basics. You're basically going to reset your campaign. You're going to reset your budgeting. Um, you're going to reset a lot of components. And, and that's how you're going to get rebooted in the top three. But, you know, if you're, if you've fallen out of the top three, give us a call or go watch that webinar. All right. So, so again, we're going in a little bit of a, a reverse order here. But number one, we, we talked about the AI, the artificial intelligence, the AI overviews, Google called them. Number two, we spent a lot of time on the local service ads. Look at this. It's right at the top of Google. Number three, we're going to hop into Google Maps. Um, okay. So uh, someone's looking for the link for the previous webinar. So maybe Alyssa or Amy can, can uh, pop it in the chat. Thank you very much. Uh, or you can just go to our YouTube channel. Just go to the 10 Golden Rules YouTube channel. When you see that cute uh, uh, comic graphic, that's the help I fall and I can't get back up. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about Google Maps, often called the three pack because there's three results here in Google. Um, now, look, a lot of consumers don't like ads. And, you know, some people just no matter how many times they see you in the local service ads, they don't believe in clicking on ads, right? Like it says sponsored, they know it's sponsored. They Maybe they don't know what this is. Maybe they don't want to call, right? Um, maybe they, they like, you know, they're doing some research and their aunt is going to go meet with the lawyer and they're looking for someone nearby. So the Google Maps becomes the first SEO result, right? Like these we're paying for, these are pay per call. Make no mistake, you're paying two, $300 for a personal injury call, you know, 50 bucks for uh, one of our attorneys is a, a tax attorney. But down here, these are free results, right? These, this is the SEO. So our client, Davis and Saperstein, is ranking number one in the local maps SEO. And this is a tremendous tool that we use. And we can show you this if you want to uh, do a little research. Um, this shows you like right at their location. So, you know, this is right in there, you know, close to their location. They're number one. And then throughout the town of Teaneck, you know, they're number one or number two. Um, on, on the Google Maps results. So that means they're either here, here, here. And as you move further away, you know, you're going to have to click more businesses to four or five. But what we're looking for when we're optimizing for the map results, obviously we want to come up in the top three as often as we can. Um, and then you see some of these other firms, you know, they fall out of the top three, uh, you know, really, really quickly. And some of them even are even in the top 20 uh, as, as you move um, out of that concentric circle. I mean, these guys, the name's been redacted to, to save face. They're number seven at their very location, and they're out of the top 20 um, in the entire area. Same thing with these guys. You know, they're at number 19 right at their location. So, of course, we're asking ourselves, how do we get in the top three? You know, how do you get this nice concentric circle, and how do you get this position in the Google Maps? So the first thing is you need Google reviews. We talked about that in the LSA section, but the local service ads are linked, like, the Google reviews you see in the local service ads come from your Google Maps. So you have to have a Google Maps address. So you want to get lots of reviews. See, Pond La Hockey's doing great. They got over 2,000 reviews. Uh, Salino and Barnes, if you know these, this uh, famous New York firm split up. They're now Salino and Barnes, and you see the review battle. Uh, Salino's winning. And then here's some folks who are failing in the Google reviews. Only 14 Google reviews, uh, only two Google, three Google reviews. So how, how can you also improve your Google Maps? Well, you've got to do Google Maps local optimization on the website. So you've got to talk about your town. You've got to have a presence um, for the city that you want to rank in. Um, and one of the, the little tricks of the trade is you can put the actual Google Maps widget on your website. So imagine like you're trying to rank for Google search. I mean, let's face it, 90, 95% of all searches are done on Google. They're not done on, you know, Bing and Yahoo and whatnot. So you can actually put the Google widget on your website. You know, that does a lot of things. Number one, you know, you're actually putting the Google software on your website. 
is that going to help with SEO? For sure it is. Number two is, you know, making it easy for people to find you. So if, if an actual client is coming to see you, they can find this on their website. They can click the Google Maps and find their way to your website. The third thing we call uh, in, in, the, in our industry is NAP. And that stands for name, address, and phone number. But, you know, it goes for everything about your listings. You really want to have precise consistency. Because remember, Google is not, not, you know, I mean, there's a lot of humans who work there, but Google is a computer. It's not a human, right? So what you want to do is you want to feed precise bits and bytes into the search engine to get the SEO results. So here's here's Davis and Saperstein again. And the way they list their company is Davis, Saperstein, Ampersand, Solomon. And everywhere throughout the, the web, super lawyers, Yelp, Facebook, they use a very exactly precisely consistent uh, naming address and phone number. So you got to be very, very careful that it's exact. Like we get screwed up all the time because our company name is 10 Golden Rules. And a lot of people list it as 10 Golden Rules T-E-N and other people list it as one zero, the number 10 Golden Rules. All right. So number one, we looked at AI. Number two, LSAs. Number three, maps. And I'm kind of doing this in order of importance because I'm not the biggest fan of the pay-per-click, you know, particularly for personal injury these days. Very, very expensive. And a lot of the clicks are going here. As a matter of fact, Google's not even showing the pay-per-click in a lot of search results these days. So I'm super bullish, obviously, you could tell on the local service ads. And I want my clients to spend every possible dollar they can, get as many of these, these calls because they're direct phone calls. Much better than clicks. All right, so number four is the SEO. And, and I'm sort of breaking these in order of importance, right? Like, I mean, this is kind of uh, new and new and exciting, but, you know, really, this is going to get you the most cases, I believe, um, followed by, you know, great SEO results, which is obviously the best cost per lead because they're free, right? Maps combined with SEO. So here's a Fern, Sam, Dan, um, you know, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for some nice growth and results. And what this data is telling us is they have 80 keywords in the top three search results, and they went to 326. So this is really tremendous SEO. Um, they have 829 in four to 10 and 1,000 in 11 to 20. Here's Garces Scrabbler. They went from 337 to 915. So how do you get these great results? Oh, by the way, <laughs> how, do you, how do you get these results uh, where you've fallen off the Google clip? And you know, when I, whenever I do this presentation um, for a live audience, um, a, a lot of times what I say to people is that, um, uh, you know, if, if this is you, you got to come see me after the presentation, because if you're if you know your SEO leads have fallen or if, or if you just feel like your phone's not ringing as much, you know, you could have gone afoul of Google. So we there's a lot of things we can find for you if your agency or your web guys haven't been able to figure this out. So let's take a look at what I call the ABCs of SEO. Because Google, there's a recent um, data leak and a lot of the Google internal documents were leaked. There's over 14,000 factors in Google figuring out like who goes in all these places, but in particular in the free SEO, um, who goes in, you know, number one, two, three, four, five in the SEO and who goes into the Google Maps in the free place. Um, so there's 14,000 factors, but, you know, obviously I don't, nobody, nobody knows exactly what they are in which order of importance but I like to simplify things. So instead of 14,000, I'm gonna give you three, the A, B, C's of SEO. And let's start with number A is architecture. So the first thing is your website has to be fast. And there's a free tool called Google Page Speed Insights that tells you how quick your website is. Um, there's, so this website does amazing, Levin Injury Law. They get 100 out of 100. So the website's wicked fast. And this is on mobile, so it means like that website, uh, Zavodnik, loads up right away. Injury Lawyer loads up right away. Craig Altman, 99 out of 100. Amazing results. Um, and then some folks who are not so fast, right? So Schrager's got some work to do. Heslin, if you if anybody knows Heslin, let them know that they got to get in touch with their web guys. KM, Injury Lawyers, My Philly Lawyer, uh, not doing so well. Um, here's some other uh, amazing uh, technical things we look at. So this is another tool where we're, we're grading websites. They get 100% performance. Their structure's good. Um, the website loads extremely quickly. Um, Mark, I see you're asking for Google Site for Speed. 
just Google page speed insights. Um, so again, here's some really amazing performance. So the A is the architecture of the website. There's a lot to it, but essentially websites got to load quickly and it's got to be easy for the spiders to read. Number two is backlinks. And here we're looking at links from other sites to your website. And essentially this is a rating that, that uh, tells Google, hey, there's something valuable over there because this blogger said, you know, if, if you're in a, in a, in a, have a traumatic brain injury, um, you got to go see these guys because they're the experts in traumatic brain injuries. Um, you know, it's like when you, you obviously you get uh, everybody gets a link from the bar association, but let's say you get a link from your chamber of commerce. Well, that's a local link. It's an important organization. You've have obviously been accepted into the chamber of commerce. Um, that becomes a vote for your website. So these guys, injurylawyer.com, have 2,377 other sites linking to their site. Monthly.com, 3,000 other sites linking to their site. My legal group, only 37. So they got some work to do on links. Um, these guys blocked out, <laughs> get a six. So where do you get high quality, influential, important links? Well, one of the things, if you can get a, an article written about your company through you know old fashioned PR, that's gonna be great. And we got uh, an article written by this um, uh, writer, Maria Williams, and it was about rideshare wrecks and what to do when you're in an accident. And then we quoted three of our attorneys, um, Jeff Phillips, Jeff McDonald, Gary Solomon, and we got links from this important publication, USA Today, to their website. Here's another one that was written uh, for our attorneys, uh, and it's about MSN, right? And we got a link to Kevin Roach, uh, Brian Garrett, and Tom Cifarelli out in California. So again, the MSN website linking to their site, a blue activated clickable uh, link is super valuable um, for the law firms. Um, here's a link on business.com and LegalZoom. So again, we're looking for important sites and relevant sites, uh, links to your website. Another site that's super valuable in Google's eyes is a .gov site, a .gov link. And this is a link that uh, Stuart and Stuart, our clients in Carmel, Indiana, negotiated with the city of Carmel, Indiana, a direct link over to their website. Another program we do is scholarships. So, you know, what a great thing. You want to give 500, 1,000 bucks of a scholarship to law school students at your law school. And the law schools are all very familiar with this request. Hey, can you link to our website? And we'll put the application form for the scholarship on our website. And it can be automated. Like the law school can take care of doing the scholarship, but you're going to get a link from a .edu, which Google sees as a, as a valuable, important link. Um, here's one from Cornell EDU to our uh, my friend Scott Silver. So the A is architecture, how your website is, how, how quick it is, how easy it is for the spiders to read, um, how accurate it is um, in terms of its navigational structure. B is backlinks, other important sites linking to you. And finally, C is content. And here we have um, a rich snippet. Um, and I'm, I'm, now I'm gonna answer Mark's question. Rich snippets are important, but it's not number six. We're still gonna reveal the sixth area of Google that's super important. But um, this is what's called a rich snippet. So above the people also ask, we're either gonna see a, an actual website or we're gonna see the, those AI results. So Google's gonna start sneaking in those artificial intelligence results here. But either way, you've got a chance to get your website linked, right? Because if, if the AI result comes up with the carousel, the same uh, sort of structure of, of creating your websites and doing your SEO applies here. So how do you get these great results, either in the rich snippet or the people also ask? Because these are other questions people ask about the ERC grants. And if I click the drop down, you got a chance to be listed there as well. So one thing is you're going to get the keyword, can you get the ERC credit for 1099s in the name of the page, in the title of the page, in the SEO on the page. So if, if a lot of people don't know this. We don't do it very often anymore. But if I use the right click function on my mouse, it opens up this, this uh, uh, agenda. And then if I click on view page source, it shows me the title, what's called the H1 title tag, the H2 tag, the description tag. So this, these are other places where you can get keywords in the code of your website that's uh, linking. Um, no, good one. Mark's got some good questions. 
Um, it's not schema code, but that's good. That's a good guess. Um, but but it's coming up real soon. So we're at number five. Number six coming up. Drum roll, please. But number six, obviously, the pay per click. So still a very good way to get clicks to your website. Um, still super valuable. Um, I, I mentioned before, I'm not a huge fan of the pay per click. Um, most of it has gotten very very expensive. I mean, look at Morgan and Morgan for the people.com. They're spending 1.5 million on pay per click. Um, they do a great job too, by the way. One thing we want to see is that you're testing lots of ads. So one of the things when you're doing pay-per-click, um, these little graphics are representative of testing. Um, so here's what auto claim lawyer, right? And see, we're testing the purple, the light purple, the dark purple, the green, the red. So they're testing lots of different ad copy. So you want to develop, you know, really clickable, um, you know, see, they've got some things here like call text 24 seven free, unless we win your case, the fee is free unless we win. Right. So you see, they're testing lots of different variants. Um, basically, you know, real good, well-structured pay-per-click campaign. Um, and then a lot of times you're also going to go to a specific landing page. So when you click on the ad, you might, like for a, a motorcycle accident turning page, go to a motorcycle accident page. Um, talk about your expertise in motorcycles. Talk about some of your largest verticals. Um, sorry, um, wins in, 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 motor, in motorcycle. Um, talk about, um, you know, some of the specialists in your, your team who maybe ride a motorcycle, right? Create a landing page so you can, when, when you when you click here, you can select which page on your website um, that ad goes to. All right, now, uh, and, and again, if you wanna learn all about pay-per-click, we have a whole entire webinar on Google pay-per-click on our YouTube channel at 10 Golden Rules, but you gotta do me a favor. If you go to watch any of these videos, you gotta subscribe to the channel because that'll help us. We're trying to get to a thousand because that gives us a little bit more leverage with Google. Um, okay, the last guess is Denner Corrales. Uh, good guess, knowledge graph, not what we're looking for. Um, so, so number one, the, the, the AI results. Number two, LSAs. And number five, number six, I clicked it by mistake, is YouTube. I mean, think of it. Google owns YouTube. Whenever Google introduces like a new thing, like, like these AIs, they rewrite everything into their algorithm. Like the local service ads is connected to Google Maps. Google Maps is connected to regular SEO. So everything's interconnected. And, and years ago, when Google bought uh, YouTube, they immediately started connecting the algorithm. So if you had YouTube videos on a topic and you ranked for those YouTube videos, that would include your SEO, increase your SEO. And when you put a YouTube video on your website, that would increase your SEO. And when you properly optimize a YouTube video, that's going to increase your chances for ranking in video searches. So we're, we're crushing it. Thank God for you all watching our, our, our videos on our channel. Um, our top video is up to 85,000 views, which blows my mind and it's awesome. So let's look at a, a YouTube search. Now, some people, a lot of us, are going to use YouTube for searches. Like I showed you a search earlier for like unclogging a sink drain. Like that's the kind of thing that you might think, hey, somebody probably did a video on this. And you, you say like, I'm going to go straight to YouTube. Now, some people are going to still search on Google, but some people are going to straight search on YouTube. So, you know, we have direct opportunity uh, to come up on YouTube. And, and guess what? There's pay-per-click ad opportunities on YouTube. And then these are all SEO results on YouTube on how to select a personal injury attorney. And you can also get video results that come up in the normal search, how to slip to, select an attorney for a slip and fall. And our client, Lyons and Snyder, came up in this result. And it directly links to YouTube. Um, so some of the things you want to do is, obviously, if you have an attractive thumbnail, a clickable looking thumbnail, you got a better chance of getting people to click on it. Um, you, you need a good title, including uh, the, the question. Like, remember, I talked earlier about a different philosophy we have. What we're doing in SEO is, is uh, of course, we're trying to rank for like car accident attorney Houston. But we're also trying to rank for questions people be asking before hiring a lawyer because we search differently, right? Like we don't just search like car accident attorney Houston. Now we've got Siri, we've got Alexa, we've got YouTube. You know, we're going to ask questions like, um, should I go to the, the hospital after a car accident in Florida? Um, do I need a car accident attorney if I was just rear-ended? Um, how, how do I get the insurance company to pay for my car repairs after a car accident? 
you know, a lot of people are going to do research. They're going to ask a question. So literally what we do is we're writing SEO blogs and videos based off of the questions that we want to get cases from. And then we, we put that as the title. So we're actually writing a question as a title, right? So like sort of counterindicative, right? Like counterintuitive. But we write the actual title, the question into the title, and we write these questions, you know, in into the, you know, do you think you have broken bones? Are you having trouble breathing? We, we write questions into the description. So you need a really good title with the keyword or the keyword question you're targeting, a really good description, and then you're going to use things like transcripts uh, in your YouTube description. And that YouTube video goes on the website on a search engine optimized blog. Now, here's... Uh, Lines and Snyder's page. We've got some tremendous results here. Um, and I see some questions coming in. By the way, I'm wrapping up the content portion. So, you know, go ahead and write questions in the chat. We'll take questions in a minute. Um, we see here that, uh, you know, these guys are doing great. 32,000 views, 26,000 views. And we're going to search engine optimize uh, the YouTube channel as well. So really good questions, um, really good, um, you know, really good um thumbnails here, uh, really good, you know, good graphics, um, and optimizing a channel, as well as optimizing each video itself. All right, so um, let me just skip quickly here, and just do a quick summary. All right, so number one, we talked about the AI search, and you've got a, an immediate opportunity to rank in, in, um, in these, uh, basically, Google's giving you their sources, the sources from the site, um, and, and so you've got a great opportunity to rank here um, as well. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're, we're, this is like the question and answer SEO we talked about in a couple sections. Because if you're helping people, if your website is answering questions, if people spend a lot of dwell time on your website, you know, watching your videos, downloading your white papers, then your website is helpful. And so Google is more likely going to use the data to say, hey, this is a great website to answer this question. So that's why we're, we're specifically creating SEO question and answer content to rank for the, the question and answer, as well as the people also ask section. So that's a great strategy going forward in your SEO. Answer questions, incorporate video, YouTube videos, uh, number six, to answer questions, and then put those blogs on your website because people are going to spend more time watching, you know, if they come and read a blog and they watch your video and you create a page, it's all about answering a question. That's the modern search engine optimization. Number two, we talked about the local service ads, Google Screen, um, and the secret algorithm for that. Um, maybe I'll grab that graphic again um, in a minute and you all could download our secret algorithm for the local service ads. But some of the basics, answer the phones, one to two new reviews per week. And uh, getting in quickly into the Google system to tell Google good lead, bad lead, give them feedback right away, and also put some keywords in your answer. So when you when you go in there, you can designate like Mrs. Smith called. She was in a car accident. Uh, she was T-boned. She's currently in the hospital, um, and she's seeing you know the, the next surgeon. She's probably going to have neck surgery. You know, the more keywords you can put in there, like car accident, hospital, neck surgeon, right? You're feeding the algorithm, the search engine algorithm. I, I mentioned all these algorithms are linked and you can be darn sure that Google has written SEO algorithms into their local service ad analysis. So if you say, yes, this is a great lead. Give me more like this. I'm paying for this lead. This, you know, this is a good lead. I'm, I, and I booked a meeting and then actually booked the meeting. Like say, you know, Mrs. Smith is coming in tomorrow at three o'clock in the local service ads. You have much more chance to rank in the local service ads. Number three is Google Maps. We talked about getting reviews, fixing your NAP, your name, address, phone. So getting lots of local sites to link to you, but make sure they're exactly precise with the name of your firm, exactly the way it is on Google Maps and your address and your phone number. Number four, SEO. We talked about the ABCs of SEO. Architecture, your website's gotta be fast and easy for the spiders to read. B is backlinks and C is content. Number five is pay-per-click. So we want to have nice a nice consistent link between the keyword, your ad, and the landing page. And you want to do lots of ad testing uh, within your pay-per-click campaigns. And the secret number six was YouTube search engine optimization. All right. So um, 
We've got some great questions here. Thank you all for playing along. Actually, let me just grab the uh, the download in case you guys want to get the secret algorithm because that's been very popular at our recent presentations. Here it is. I'm just going to throw this up and then I'm going to answer some questions. Um, and you can either scan that or you can just go to www.10goldenrules.com spelled out T E N G O L D E N R U L E S dot com, 10goldenrules.com forward slash L S A, like local service ads, underscore ebook, E B O O K, 10goldenrules.com forward slash L S A underscore ebook. Obviously, I'm reading that out for folks who hopefully are listening to this on a podcast one day and you, and you want to download that. All right. So, um, let me get to some of the chat here. Uh, great questions. Hey, Alicia is on the call. Grace Clark, nice to see you. Um, I'm going to go all the way back to the start and get some questions. Hello from Gainesville. Snippets, people also asked, was a guest, was a good guess. AI, we got. Um, okay, Gabriel, is it very hard to win a dispute for LSAs even when the calls are outside of your practice area? Oh, it is very hard, yes, that's correct. Like, in terms of the disputes in the local service ads, you know, first thing is got to be quick. Um, second thing is type in notes, you know, type in very detailed notes. But, you know, a lot of times Google's not giving you those disputes. You know, basically at the end of the day, you got to do the math on the local service ads. Hey, we, you know, they gave us, um, you know, whatever it is, like 20 phone calls. It costs uh, $4,000 for the month. Um, so whatever the math is is on that, like uh, 50 bucks a call. Is that right? Um, that's probably wrong. That's probably 200 bucks a call. And then um, how many how many were, were good qualified leads? You know, leads we wanted to sign. How many did we sign? And, and do the math on all those things. I showed you all a chart where we've got the, the how much we paid. Um, how much we took off for the disputes, how many calls we actually got, the cost per lead, around 300 bucks in that chart, how many clients we signed, about 30, spent about 30,000, cost per lead was about 11, cost per signed client was about 1100 to $1,200. So do the math on the local service ads. Um, question from Grace Clark, is it worth accepting leads from an LSA if it's not a case you practice in, but you have a paid referral? thousand percent. What you want to do is tell Google, I, I I love you, Google, and and I want you to send me lots of leads, and I want to spend lots of money with you. So you know, look, the algorithm is designed for you to succeed, but it, let's face it, it's also designed for Google to succeed. And Google succeeds when they have happy clients, and that means if they post an LSA and your brand's there, and someone clicks it, you answer it really quickly, one or two rings, and you accept the case, and you pay Google for it. And everybody's happy, right? Like, you know, the algorithm is designed to optimize for you, optimize for the user, like the Google user, the Google searcher, and optimize for Google to make money. So paying for those leads is definitely the way to go. So obviously, if you can refer it out, um, that's a win-win-win scenario. Um, everybody's winning. Um, fast, IVR equals phone tree. Thanks for clarifying that, Mark. Um, Real-time dispositions are ideal. Yeah, like um, Alicia's getting in super quickly and, dispositioning all the calls uh, local service ads announced this week we can no longer do disputes oh wow um okay i i assume my my lsa team knows that uh, mark likes a funny slide maybe that's the help i've fallen i can't get back up um is number six featured snippets no it was uh youtube number six is schema no um Aloisa, sorry, can you go back one slide, please? I'm not sure what one that was, but if you tell me what you're looking for, I'll go back there. Um, question from Tyler Crow. How do you determine where to draw the line between whether to ask and answer a question on your transactional page versus whether to create a new piece of content that covers the question? That's a good question. And I think what you're saying is like a transactional page, like, um, you know, car accident attorney page. Um, or your, um, you know, your like like a practice area page, like your car accident, truck accident, motorcycle accident. Um, do you want to answer questions on those page uh, versus create a new page of content that covers that question? You know, a lot of a lot of Google questions are like it depends. Uh, if your page is ranking really really well and doing well, 
and getting transactions, then I would create a new page of content. Um, and and I, I wouldn't cover the exact question, but I would broaden out a little bit. So you don't want to confuse Google that you're really doing the same thing on two pages on your website. So I'll maybe come at it from a different way um, and create a new page or do it as a blog post or do it as a video and a video blog so that Google doesn't you know, get confused and it doesn't hurt um, the results you're getting on that current page. Um, BB if new XR6516. Uh, yes, there will be a replay and we post all of these on our YouTube channel. Uh, Mark D, very good seminar, Diamond Apple presenter. Thank you, Jay, at all. You're very welcome. Um, are FAQ sections still valuable? Hey, Bruce Silver, hope everything's great. Um, yeah, um, we like FAQ sections. Um, it's another way, uh, you know, it, it, look, it makes sense for the consumer, right? Like a lot of consumers read FAQs on a lot of e-commerce sites and things like that. Um, so it's a great way to answer questions, like we said, very valuable for SEO. Maybe you even put a video blog um, into your FAQ and answer the question on video, answer it with words, explain with the words what's answered in the video. Um, and um, FAQs are a, a logical place for people to navigate. And Google likes that when people, you know, go to a lot of areas of your site, read multiple pages, spend dwell time, watch videos, you know, all of that's now built into the algorithm to see how helpful your website is. Because think of it this way, like, like we're saying Google now is, is built, you know, help and answering questions, like helping people solving problems into the algorithm. Well, if they click and come to your website and then they go right back to Google, and you know, they click the back button, it probably means they couldn't get an answer on your website or they couldn't find a way to get an answer. So what you wanna do is design your website to have you know, lots of really good answers, really detailed answers to the questions, very easy for them to find. And then you know, a page that encourages them to spend time on that page. So Google sees, hey, when somebody asks a question about Uber and Lyft accidents and they go to Jeff McDonald's website, there's a really great answer there, meaning mathematically, statistically, Google's measuring, okay, click over to the site. How long did it take for this consumer to come back to Google, you know, or, or leave? And what did they do there? Did they call Jeff McDonald, right? Because we, you know, most of our sites have Google Analytics. Most of our sites have call tracking. Most of our sites are measuring that call or the form fill or the chat as a conversion. So Google knows darn well. I clicked over to Jeff McDonald. They read this blog about um, Uber and Lyft accidents. They watch this video about Uber and Lyft accidents, and then they call Jeff McDonald, right? They know that the site was helpful. So helpful, in fact, they wanted to call Jeff McDonald and do business with him. So, you know, again, you're, when, when you're thinking of SEO, you're thinking of architecturing your sites to, to answer questions for folks and be helpful and get them to spend time on your site. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Mark D says, a video site for corporate attorneys. SueTube, S-U-E tube. -E -tube. Um, Tyler Kraut, since Gemini results are an opt-in service that works when you're logged in and most tools don't crawl the SERPs like that, what's the best way to track your success in Gemini, sourcing you in its answers? I think I think I covered that to the best of my knowledge. It's like, um, you're going to answer questions, you're gonna be helpful. You know, it's all the same type of SEO strategies about answering questions and solving problems we talked about earlier. Um, Eloisa, what are the most important KPIs that my marketing agencies should report on? I mean, look, at, at the end of the day, I, I showed you my, what I think is the most important KPI. Um, and that's how many sign cases and what's the cost per sign case. At the end of the day, that's the number one. Um, and then we're going to work our way back from that, right? How many cases did we want? What was the cost per uh, cases that we want? You know, because maybe you couldn't sign them, but they were still really good leads. You're still going to want the source that provided a really, a really good lead, a really good prospect, um, and then, um, you know, then again, we're we're going to work back from cost per sign case. So just um, traffic and leads. There's really three kind of leads we focus on um, in 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 most of our clients' websites: calls, form fills, and chats. And not in that order. We want calls. Twenty to twenty five percent of calls convert to sign clients. We want chats. A lot of people are not going to pick up the phone. Like, let's, you know, imagine, you know, you're calling about a, a terrible accident and, and your aunt's terrible injury and your two kids are sitting there, you know, watching TV and you're doing research on your cell phone. 
there's zero chance you're picking up the phone. Uh, what if you're at work and you you know you're on a, hopefully you're on a break you're not actually working and you're doing research for your aunt's car accident you're not picking up the phone to talk about your aunt's car accident while your coworkers are, are in the space so chat becomes super important and increases your conversion opportunities and finally form fills but you know we, I actually discourage form fills when we're designing websites now you know the form's going to be there it's at the very bottom of the page some people want to fill out a form they're they're old fashioned or whatever. But, you know, chats and text, a lot, of, a lot of consumers want to text. You know, if you get under 40 into the millennial age or even under 45, you know, people just communicate that way, right? So, you know, for those of us who own firms and might be a little over 40, like we don't just naturally think like, why would someone text? They would call my firm. No, you know, a lot of millennials and, and Gen Zs, Gen Ys, like they want to they wanna text. They don't like to talk to, to human beings. So you got to have that function on your site. Um, so, you know, the, again, we're going to look at web traffic, number of leads as defined by calls, chats, and forms. Um, and then some, some of the other KPIs, like we're going to look at SEO, we're going to look at, um, you know, dwell time, we talked about that, um, some of the website traffic statistics, um, but now we're digging deeper. I mean, the main, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, what was my web traffic, what were my leads, how many leads, what lead sources, cost per lead on the paid services, cost per sign case, um, and maybe look at Google Maps um, and you, some YouTube data. Um, the, you guys are great today. These are awesome questions. Aaron Floor, thanks for participating. Any suggestions if one LSA listing is suspended for circumventing? Help tickets unresponsive uh, for over a month. Delete and remake, is that risky? You know, if you're getting into a month, um, try and stick it out for a couple more weeks, but then you can delete and remake. It's not the end of the world. I mean, you're, you're going, going to leave your uh, Google Maps in place, but you can reboot the, the local service ads. Um, it's not a bad idea. Gabriella Novo, and we're, we're happy to look at that for you. Aaron, like so, sometimes when we look at an account, we find like we were, someone was very frustrated. Their local service ads weren't running. Their agency was telling them they're doing everything they can. Um, and we went in the account and we just found a credit card that was, um, it needed to be reconfirmed. So uh, sometimes you can just dig a little deeper in the LSAs, uh, but it sounds like you know what you're doing. So uh, Gabriel Novo, the problem is when you spend all this money on Google and then you get a one-star review, as a lawyer, you can't do much to get it off. You're limited how you respond and have to follow the Florida bar language. You dispute it with Google and get absolutely nowhere. Yeah, you know, look, here's here's the pros and cons. I mean, the good thing is, you don't want to have a 5.0 rating. And we all know it. Like when you look at a restaurant and there's, you know, 14 reviews and they're all five star, you know, that's friends and family. You know, there's not any consumers who've done a review yet. So we like to see like the four eights, the four nines, the four sevens, um, you know, maybe for a product like four sixes, four sevens. And, and we all know how to do it. Like you go look at the one star reviews and someone's like, oh, this, you know, this TV is great, but the packaging was ripped. Come on, buddy, you gave him a one-star review for that? So, um, you know, a lot of times we look at those negative reviews. And so, all you, you know, if someone gives you a one-star review, and especially if it's like um, the, the guy we had earlier who looked like he signed in as, as a cell phone, uh, what was it? Um, BB if new XR 6516. You know, if, if it's a review from someone like that, just say, you know, I'm sorry, uh, BB, I don't have anyone uh, in our client files with your name. If something did go wrong, I'd love you to reach out to me directly, give them a, a direct email address and a direct phone number and say, um, you know, we're very proud of the work we do at our firm. You know, we haven't had any instances like this that I'm aware of, um, and I'd love you to contact me directly so we can take care of it. And if a consumer sees that and they see the one-star review, don't beat yourself up over it. You know, the, the new person searching is going to see that you're still, you know, 4748. And, and they're going to see that you respond to these, you know, kind of fake reviews. Um, slide request, how much M&M was paying for PPC? See if I can dig that up. Oh, how much Morgan Morgan was paying for PPC? Yeah, that, that that's like 1.5 million. But... Um, one thing about that data point, 
it's a little uh it, it's it's the, one of the less accurate you know like we, we showed you the maps research and and the, and the obviously the screenshots of the google searches those are pretty accurate but this is our least accurate tool uh, i think you can see it um yeah so one thing that's super accurate is we i i can you know 95 percent, 99 percent tell you that Morgan's spending more money than they were spending in 2020. So they basically ramp, you know, it says they're spending a million five now. Um, is that is that right? Oh, it says, it says they're spending a million now. Um, you know, what, what, they're probably spending like 8 million. Like this tool is not, because Google doesn't know how many searches or how many ads are running on every browser all across the country. But they do know that that like th this tool is is grabbing a sample of you know thousands and thousands of, of browsers. They probably have a um, you know a free app they gave you that you downloaded, but they can't see all the Google ads. So one thing they do know though is the spend is increased, like the share is increased, and they're spending a lot of money. But the the one point five million is probably not um, super precise. Okay, so I'll put the download back up in case you guys want to grab it. Here's the super secret algorithm again. Um, okay. Again, thanks for the questions. This is awesome. Is having multiple Google My Business listings in the cities you want to dominate still the best solution for near me related searches? A thousand percent. Um, is the homepage tab still relevant on websites or is it reasonable to assume that viewers click the home and the logo? Um, we just put the logo now. Uh, most people kind of know that. Um, is the home tab relevant for SEO? I don't think so. Google knows that. What's the third thing, foreign frames? Gabriella, can you explain that again? We had three parts of Google. The third part was artificial intelligence, um, but I, I covered that first. Um, the other, you know, so it's 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 uh, local service ads, pay-per-click, artificial intelligence, uh, Google Maps, and SEO. How'd you pull up the Google page with a heat map overlay? Um, oh, that's that's a tool. We use a couple different tools for that. So we use Local Viking, um, Bright Local, and uh, the, the one with the circular is called Search Atlas. We really like that. It's a new tool. Um, I think we're at the end of the hour, so some folks are bugging out. Louisa, thank you so much. Mark Lopez, Gabriel Nubo. So guys, awesome. I'm going to wrap up here because um, we're just over an hour and I like to keep them at an hour. But, you know, please, you know, contact me at 10 Golden Rules. Give us a, a subscribe on, on YouTube. I love you for it. And uh, if you're listening to this on, on iTunes and you got some value, you know, please subscribe to our show on, on iTunes or Spotify if you're listening to the audio sometime in the future. And, and by the way, you know, this is June 2024. If you're listening to this anytime in the future, you know, come to Tangle Rules or go to my LinkedIn, Jay Berkowitz on LinkedIn, and and just say, hey, you know, I, I love it. We give people give me a shout out, and uh, you know, it's back to the future, right? Um, so thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, um, whenever you're listening to this. And uh, with that, um, we'll see you next month. Um, what's coming up? Oh, we've got um, we're going to talk about nearshoring and offshoring your legal services. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for listening to the 10 Golden Rules of Internet Marketing for Law Firms podcast. Please send questions and comments to podcast at 10goldenrules.com. That is podcast at 10goldenrules.com.